This morning, I am going to read from a very familiar Bible passage this morning of Jesus walking on the water. Before we do that, though, let us pray. O oh God, by your Spirit, tell us what we need to hear and show us what we ought to do to obey Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So today's scripture passage that I'm going to focus on comes from Matthew 14, verses 22 to 33. And if you care to follow along, I'm told you can find it on page 12 of the Pew Bible. I'll be reading, though, from the New International Version. Um, so listen for the word of the Lord. Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side while he dismissed the crowd. After he had dismissed them, he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. Later that night, he was there all alone, and the boat was already a considerable distance from the land, buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. Shortly before dawn, Jesus went out to them, walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking in the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and they cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, Take courage, it is I. Don't be afraid. Peter replied, Lord, if it's you, tell me to come to you on the water. Jesus said, Come. Then Peter got out of the boat, walked on the water, and came towards Jesus. But when Peter saw the wind, he became afraid, and he began to sink, crying out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You of little faith, Jesus said, why did you doubt? And when they climbed into the boat, the wind died. Then those who were in the boat worshiped Jesus, saying, truly, you are the Son of God. This is the word of the Lord. Well, this particular story I'm sure you've heard many times before about Jesus walking on the water to reach his disciples. As a matter of fact, you've probably read of it several times. In fact, it appears in three of the four Gospels. All of them are similar, but all of them have a slightly different take on this miracle. But first, if you're really thinking about it, you might ask yourself a question. It sounds sort of like a silly joke, actually. Is why did Jesus and disciples cross the sea? So sort it of sounds like, why did the chicken cross the road, right? And the simple answer is to get to the other side, which is exactly what they were trying to do because they knew that there were other people on the other side of the lake that they had to minister to. But actually, there's a bit more to the reason of why they were crossing the lake. Let's take a step backwards first. Let's look at what was going on at the time. As you know, Jesus was going about ministering, preaching, and most of all, performing miracles. The Gospels are replete with them. Now, he was in the territory of Herod. And we all know the reputation that Herod had. In fact, Herod had just recently beheaded John the Baptist for doing similar things. And when Herod heard that there were still miracles being performed by this man named Jesus, he began to believe that Jesus was actually John come back from the dead. And of course, Herod wanted to see Jesus in his court. Jesus, having heard that Herod was interested in chatting with him, quote, chatting, decided, you know, probably time to move on. And while he was getting ready to move on, it's when he ministered to the 5,000. And when he fed them with the miracle of the loaves and the fish. It was immediately after that that he told his disciples, as soon as they had done with the miracle, he said, get in the boat and go to the other side and I will join you. But perhaps as St. John, the Gospel of John says, maybe the miracle of the loaves and the fishes was another reason why 
Jesus and the Twelve were to cross the sea. Because you see, it was such a great miracle that it whipped up the 5,000. They talked about the crowd, talked about taking Jesus by force and making him king. Well, as you can imagine, you're in Herod's territory. And the people to declare another king wouldn't be such a wise idea, would it? And Jesus knew that actually that was not the kind of king he was to be. So, Jesus sent his disciples onward. And as they were rowing out, the storm came up. But that might be why, that might be the third reason why Jesus sent his disciples across the lake. A lesson in faith to teach them. Because Jesus was sensing that his disciples, though they truly believed in him, didn't necessarily have unequivocal faith in his uh, godliness. Certainly there are other boats, so why did Jesus send his disciples off? So as the story unfolds, as you well know, the disciples encounter the rough seas. And perhaps this is a fitting uh, metaphor for what is going on. He sends them out because he knows that eventually the disciples are going to be alone ministering to other people. And just like the stormy seas, the disciples should expect to encounter all kinds of toils, the winds of disbelief blowing in their face, the waves of resistance crashing over them, and the persecution of their enemy. So by exposing them now to this turmoil, he's essentially training his disciples to become aware of the challenges before them. But there's one key piece missing, and that's what Jesus is probably trying to teach his disciples. Developing unquestionable, unequivocal faith. Now think about this. Despite seeing all those miracles, despite with being Jesus all this time, the disciples are in this boat. The storm's coming up, and they become scared. Now this is not the first time they have been in a boat out in the sea when there's been rough storms. They had been in the boat previously under similar conditions, but with Jesus in the boat. And Jesus stood up and said, why are you afraid? And he calmed the storm. Now they're back in the boat without Jesus, the same situation. They're fearing for their lives. And suddenly, imagine this. They're scared. They believe the end is near. And then they look out through the storm and they see walking towards them what they believe is a ghost. A ghost. Surely, what would be going through your mind at that time? Does, is this a sign that we're about to be taken up? Does this mean we're already dead? But then the ghost reveals themselves to be Jesus. Imagine their confusion. Imagine, are they dead or is this another miracle? And then they are assured when the ghost, Jesus, says, don't be afraid, it's me. That knowledge was enough to calm them and cheer them and no longer be fearful. But there's Peter. Peter truly believes, at least he thinks he does, believes in Jesus but only as far as his faith will take them. And that is the principal lesson of this passage. Peter finds out that his faith is not unequivocal. He did know, after he got up and started walking, that he was in the middle of a storm and humans don't walk on water and he begins to sink and he does what every human would probably do. He says, save me. And Jesus does. But as the passage says, Jesus is a little bit disappointed about Peter's small shortcoming in his faith. But it's just as important to realize that Jesus or that Peter had the courage to test his faith by getting out 
of the boat and walking towards Jesus. And we should all know that faith can't be conjured up with formulas or emotions. It takes tests of our courage and belief to form our faith. Faith grows out of a relationship with the Christ. There's just really no other way. So what does this passage say to us today? In a sense, if you think about it, our life is often like a ship tossed at sea. We, we encounter tempests, strong winds, and tides that, that work against us. Look at life today. Look at what's happened in the last several weeks. Look what happened yesterday. We're all facing these challenges. What do we do? This passage tells the story of every Christian's uh, challenge as we move back and forth between our doubt and our faith. Sometimes we're focused solely on the storm and sometimes we're focused on Jesus. You know, if I had thought about it, and I didn't think about this till after uh, the bulletin was already printed, there's, there's a hymn that starts out in the first verse. Jesus calls us over the tumult of our life's wild, restless sea. How appropriate for today. Indeed, Jesus called his disciples in the midst of a wild and restless sea, not to beckon them to get away from the storm. Rather, he called his disciples into the storm. And that's what it takes when you place your faith in Christ. So this story is meant to reveal the real Jesus, which is only possible in the midst of chaos. If Jesus hadn't encouraged his disciples to walk into the tumult, to embark upon this uncertain journey, they would have missed the opportunity to see God revealed in their midst. So, where does that leave us? Well, the nature of faith rests on being willing to throw oneself into a disorderly world and expect to encounter Jesus there. So when it comes to trusting Jesus, what keeps us from getting out of the boat and walking through the troubled waters? What keeps you from daring to trust Jesus at those times? The only thing I can tell you, my friends, is this. Get out of your boat. Walk through the troubled waters with the full and unremitting faith in Jesus Christ. Walk through life's tumult knowing that Jesus is waiting there for you. Thanks be to God. Amen.